The massive particle accelerators at CERN have recently come back online, and people are asking the question of whether the high energy particle physics being done at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland are affecting the natural energy fields of the Earth known as the Schumann Resonances. And over the past three days, we've had some really unusual activity in the Schumann Resonances, these quick rapid bursts of energy that aren't like anything I've really ever seen before. So I wanna look into whether this is something that could be caused by high energy particle physics being done at CERN. We know that the scientists at CERN are now gonna be using the particle accelerators of the CERN complex for the next four years. So is this something that is gonna be affecting the energy fields of the Earth for the next four years? Well, let's find out in this video. I'm your host, Stefan, and let's dive right in. CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It's the world's largest science experiment, consisting of a sequence of massive particle accelerators underground located near Geneva, Switzerland. CERN was founded in 1954, and on July 5th, 2022, after three years of upgrades and maintenance work, the Large Hadron Collider formally began conducting experiments again for run three. It will be operational for the next four years. The Large Hadron Collider, or the LHC for short, was restarted in April for testing, so while July marked the operational beginning of Run 3, the LHC and other smaller particle accelerators at CERN have been operating since April 2022 at various power intensities. To go into more detail, the accelerator complex at CERN is a succession of machines with powerful magnetic fields that accelerate particles to increasingly higher energies. Each accelerator boosts the energy of a beam of particles before injecting it into the next accelerator in the sequence. In the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, the last element in this chain, particle beams are accelerated up to a record energy of 14 tera electron volts. For a beam of particles, that's a very high energy, but quite insignificant when compared to the amount of energy any piece of modern electronics, like a light bulb, radiates. Two particle beams circulate in the LHC in opposite directions. Superconducting dipole magnets are used to bend the path of the particles in order to keep them on their circular track. These magnets are formed of two superconducting coils, and the current going through each of the coils reaches 11,080 amps in order to generate a magnetic field of 7.8 teslas. Each dipole magnet only deflects the path of the particle beam by 0.3 degrees, so there are 1,232 of these dipole magnets needed to bend the beams around the entire LHC. So there are 1,232 dipole magnets being used just for the LHC, and each of these dipole magnets generates a magnetic field of 7.8 teslas, which is 7.8 trillion times stronger than the Schumann resonances, which operate at picotesla strengths because 7.8 teslas is equivalent to 7.8 trillion picoteslas. The LHC also has quadrupole magnets and every accelerator that's a part of CERN uses hundreds of these very powerful magnets to focus the beams of high energy particles that they use for their high energy physics experiments. So if CERN's run three is spiking the Schumann resonances, it's not from the high energy particle beams, but rather from the extremely high powered electromagnetic magnets that they're using to bend these particle beams around the particle accelerators. CERN is conducting LHC experiments to identify and analyze the wide range of particles its collisions produce. It's also doing fixed target experiments, antimatter experiments, dark matter experiments, and some other non-accelerator experiments. Important to note is that particle accelerators at CERN are located 100 meters underground. So the extremely high power electromagnetic fields that CERN is creating first have to propagate through 100 meters of hard rock geology before these EM waves can propagate into and through the atmosphere. The magnetic permittivity of rock is much different than that of air or vacuum. So even though the magnetic fields that CERN is creating are very powerful, much of that energy attenuates and dissipates in the geologic layers that CERN is built in. That said, the Schumann resonances are extremely subtle energy fields, existing at only picotesla strengths. And whatever electromagnetism can make it out of the CERN facility and pass the hard rock geology, once it enters into the atmosphere, it can begin propagating much more easily. 
and just one of these magnets that they're using has a strength 7.8 trillion times stronger than the Schumann resonances. And they have 1,200 plus of these magnets being used for the LHC, plus hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other magnets being used for all the other accelerators. So there's a massive amount of electromagnetism being generated at CERN, and whatever is able to make it past the hard rock geology certainly is impacting the electromagnetic field outside of the CERN complex in Switzerland and overall Europe and the world. So now that we've discussed the high energy particle physics that CERN does and the extremely powerful electromagnetic fields that they create to do this, let's look at the Schumann resonances and get a better understanding of whether these weird spikes in the Schumann resonances were caused by activities at CERN or some other factor. So to first start off, we'll look at the spectrogram of the Schumann resonances, and this is a plot of power and also frequency. So we have our uh, electromagnetic background, from zero to 40 hertz. So this is, for example, the foundational mode of the Schumann resonance is pulsing eight times per second. That's a frequency of eight. And then we have mode two here at 14 hertz. And then we have mode three here at 20. And then we have mode four around 25. And we see these just random sudden bursts of activity. This is daytime right here. The Schumann resonance is increasing activity during the day uh, because the sun ionizes the ionosphere and that increases the Schumann resonances and then we get these quiet bits here at night. So we have our power legend there. We can see that blue and this dark blue indigo purple that's a low energy and then green is about normal and orange yellow and especially white are high energy um, just high powers. So we see that we're just getting these quick random bursts of activity and it's like very very rapid like look at this one for example. This is uh, that's one hour right there. I mean, this is like five minutes maybe, 10, 10 minutes if that, just like a quick burst of activity. The Schumann resonance is a spike and then they go right back down. And we see their normal uh, power band there and then we see these spikes across this extremely low frequency spectrum. Across all of the frequencies too. It's not just the Schumann resonances. It's not just this eight hertz band. It's also 10 hertz here, 12 hertz here. It's also 17 hertz there, that increase in power. So we also have some data here that I've plotted. We have X-ray flux from the GO satellite that NASA has, and we also have the K index. These are the, the bars there. And we're going to talk about that more. I'm going to come back to this slide, but I also want to look at before we go really in depth on the X-ray flux and the K ind indices, I want to look at the power, the frequency, and the Q factor of the Schumann resonances to better understand what we're seeing here, just to better quantify just exactly what these high energy bursts are like. So with the Schumann resonance power readings, we're seeing some definite activity across the power during the daytime, these notable spikes going up but we're not seeing any extremely significant power increases. We're not seeing anything spike to 50, 60, 70, 80, or beyond, like we do sometimes with really big impacts from coronal mass ejections or lightning nearby the Tomsk station. Now, I wanna be clear, the, the weather in Tomsk, Russia recently has been pretty stable. There was a little bit of lightning that happened a few days before these readings that we're looking at here. This isn't caused by local lightning near Tomsk, Russia, so we can cross that off. That's the first likely candidate for something like these just random bursts here because a lightning bolt's very fast, just boom, and then it's done. But it's not being caused by that because the weather, there was no thunderstorms at the time near Tomsk. So it's unlikely to be any sort of lightning atmospheric disturbances like I'm having right now here. Um, but we do see these big power increases, they're very sudden, uh, and it's pretty identical across all the modes. So that is not atypical. The modes uh, typically respond in similar ways, uh, just that mode one will typically be the strongest. And we see mode one go to a, an amplitude reading of 39, where a high amplitude reading of 39, whereas mode two only goes to 23, and mode three goes to 16, and mode four goes to about 11. So the power readings, nothing super unusual here other than the fact that we see this very um, just chaotic pulsed volatile pattern there. Now if we look at the frequency, it's pretty normal too. There's only one interesting observation I wanna make here. 
And that's that mode four decreases in power here when the other modes all increase in power. And typically a power uh, increase corresponds to a frequency decrease. So we had some power increase in mode four in this time window that was only mode four because if that power increase happened for modes one, two, and three, they would have also gone down in power. Now, how that relates to these uh, quick bursts of energy we're seeing in the Schumann resonances, I can't really say because it doesn't really line up, right, with any of that. This is all nighttime activity here. So mode four had just an increase in power at night, it seems, in comparison to modes one through three, but it's not really related to these bursts of activity as far as we can tell. Now, mode four also has some uh, interesting activity here across its Q factor. Q factor is a measure of how well an electromagnetic wave resonates, how quickly it attenuates. The higher the Q factor, the less it kind of dissipates its energy. So a higher Q factor means it's resonating better in the atmosphere. And we see that the Q factor spikes for all of these, especially during the daytime and especially during those quick bursts of activity. But what we see here is that Q, uh, the Q factor for mode four is just of a higher uh, quality than it is for like, let's say mode one, which typically resonates the best. For example, mode one here only reaches above 10 twice, whereas mode four goes above that value of 10, 12 times. So there's this uh, energetic factor that's really funneling energy towards that 25, 24, 26 hertz band, that mode four band of the Schumann resonances versus modes one, two, and three. Now let's go back to our spectrogram, our K indices, and our X-ray flux. Is this being caused by CERN? That's the question. Well, we've established that first off, it's not lightning discharges in Tomsk, Russia, because we have the weather for that. We can actually look right here. Thunderstorms on the 7th, but nothing for 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th. And the, how the sun flares impacts the geomagnetic field, and this can be um, basically quantified via the planetary K index, which are these columns here. So each of these columns corresponds to the three hours there. And if we look at the K indices, we see that there's really no super notable activity. This actually goes all the way to 10. I just cut it off at five. And the only time it gets to uh, a K index of even four is at this nighttime period when mode four increases in power. I think that's exactly the same time mode four goes down. So there is some geomagnetic activity that funneled into mode four at that time. And we see that with the K indices being increased, but overall they're kind of stable at three, two, and one, like one's right there. But we do see with the X-ray flux data that it lines up pretty nicely with what we're seeing in the Schumann resonances. So if you look at this bump in x-ray flux it lines up pretty nicely with that pulse there if we look at this spike or these spikes here lines up nicely this spike there corresponds you know fairly nicely it's not perfect but overall we see like a, a hump here in the x-ray flux and we see at nighttime an increase in the schumann resonances and that's a really good indicator that what we're seeing here in the schumann resonances is an activity from cern but rather increased solar activity and that the sun is just kind of flinging these really quick rapid bursts of uh, electromagnetic waves at the earth and that this is hitting the magnetosphere and this is hitting the ionosphere creating these quick rapid bursts of Schumann resonance activity. So I don't think what we're seeing here is activity from CERN. I think what we're seeing is just sporadic electromagnetic radiation from the sun. We know that as uh, solar cycle 25 increases, we're gonna get more and more uh, solar activity hitting the Earth, most likely. At least the solar activity is gonna keep increasing. I have a video on that you can watch. But I don't think what we're seeing here is from CERN because the, the extremely high-powered electromagnetic fields from CERN have to go through all that bedrock geology and then they have to propagate into the atmosphere. And they've been running experiments now at CERN since July 5th. And I've been looking at the Schumann resonances, I look at them every day, and we haven't been seeing activity like this every single day. And we haven't been seeing activity like this at night. And if CERN was active at night, which I imagine they have some of their schedules happening at night because why waste any hour, 
then we'd be seeing these pulses of activity at night too. But instead, we're just seeing a pretty nice background electromagnetic spectrum at night. So I think this is really from uh, solar activity. The fact that's all happening during the day, the daylight side means that the, the sun is lined up with that Tomsk Russia station and whatever particles are hitting are being measured there. And then also we get an indication that that's the case with this X-ray flux data collected by NASA. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope it answers some of your questions that you had about CERN and the Schumann resonances. And I can't say I've definitively answered the question. That would require me to do some mathematical calculations of these, um, these Tesla strength magnetic fields and of course there's like thousands of those magnets and I would have to then calculate how it propagates through the hard rock geology into the atmosphere. But I think it's pretty safe to say that we're not seeing CERN influencing the electromagnetic field of the Schumann resonances in any significant way. Of course, every electromagnetic field influences all the electromagnetic fields of the universe. I have a video on the holographic theory of consciousness which talks about that a little bit, but I think it's safe to say that this is solar activity and the X-ray flux data that's collected by NOAA and NASA points to that being the case, as does the fact that it only really shows up during the daytime except for this one here that shows up at night. So thanks so much for watching the video. Please subscribe if you'd like to learn more about the Schumann resonances and just electromagnetism in general. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Ciao.